In this tutorial, we are going to look at uh, adding a new user or editing or updating an existing user. When you log into the ModX interface, uh, you'll see at the very top a Manage button. When you hover over it, you'll have a drop-down. And we'll go ahead in this example, we'll choose Users. Now, what you'll see here is a list of existing uh, users that we have in the system. We have four. What I typically recommend people to do, or people do, is if they want to assign a new uh, login uh, permission to, for example, someone on their team, I usually recommend duplicating one of the existing ones, and I'll show you why. What we do whenever we set up a ModX website is we set two levels of users. We set a super admin, which has full access and control over ModX. By the way, I'm logged in as a test user in this example, or at least my username is test user, and I don't really get to see all of the functions of ModX. Why do we hide some of the functions? Well, there's areas that you just don't want to get into if you're not really equipped to do so. For example, what would happen if you got in and started messing up templates or HTML or PHP code? Um, if you're not equipped for that, it could be more, more danger than good. So what we typically do is we set up a, a sub-admin user role, and that allows to uh, kind of restrict your control uh, for, you know, from, uh, from potentially damaging something on the site. It keeps things a little safer. So whenever you log in, we usually always have an, uh, a test user exam or a test user setup. This is kind of one of our default sub-admin setups. So, say uh, Jane Doe on your team wants an account, and it's always good to give everybody their own individual account. This allows you to be able to track and control who's doing what in the back end. If you were to give someone your user login, uh, username and password to log in, they may get in and accidentally delete or damage something or you may not even want them in the back end later and say, you know what, they're no longer part of our team and I need to remove them quickly. Well, it's very, very easy. So, for example, let's take the uh, example of Jane Doe that we want to add. Well, I simply come over to the test user and I right click on this whole line right here. Again, that's right click and I go to duplicate user. It's going to duplicate down uh, this one from right here. So, now I'll put my mouse on it, right click, again, that's right click and I'll go to update user. And I'm going to change her uh, information. I'll put Jane Doe and put her name, Jane Doe, and jane.doe at gmail.com. Should be active. You can pretty much ignore a lot of these other things unless you want to play around with them. The other thing that's important as well is setting up her new password. So I click on new password. ModX will either specify it for you or it will email them to me or to that individual. I usually like to just email it myself uh, for different reasons. But uh, in this one, you can let ModX generate the password or you can uh, specify the password. If I choose to let ModX, whenever I save it, it's going to show it to me right here so I can copy this off and then email it over to Jane. And again, you can have the system just send it out if you'd like as well. That's no problem. Um, and so really, once you're done, everything's set the way you like, you go ahead and hit save. And it's going to tell you, you know what? Uh, actually, it added a new password, I think, because we didn't have that. Uh, I think we actually left that check. So once I'm done setting that up, I'll email the information to Jane. And uh, that, in a nutshell, is how you go about setting up a new user.